Saturday. Even with the added space we got from the boat, the minivan was still pretty full. I stuck my pillow on board at the last second because I decided I was entitled to at least one luxury item. I figured Roderick would want to sit in the back of the van because whenever we go anywhere as a family, he likes to stretch out and take a nap. Every once in a while, we'll forget Roderick is even back there. This Easter, we made it halfway through church before Mom realized Roderick never made it out of the van. He's still asleep in there. Back when he had a station wagon, me and Roderick used to sit in the way back together in a seat that faced the rear window. But we got in big trouble when we played a practical joke on mom and dad that ended up getting us pulled over by the police. These people are kidnapping us, is what their signs say. Never, ever, ever do that. When we got in the van today, Roderick offered me the back seat. I accepted before he could change his mind, but I should have known his offer was too good to be true. Before we pulled out of the driveway, Mom said we were taking a special guest along for the ride. For a second, I was worried we were picking someone else up because with all our stuff in the van, they'd have to sit on the roof. But Mom opened her purse and pulled out a piece of paper with a drawing on it. The drawing was Flat Stanley, a character from a book I read in second grade. Flat Stanley is the boy who gets squashed by a bulletin board that falls off his bedroom wall in the middle of the night. And when they pull the bulletin board off him, he's as thin as a piece of paper. I thought it was pretty cool that Flat Stanley could fold himself up and get mailed to his grandma's or have his brother fly him like a kite. But I'll tell you this, if Flat Stanley had a brother like Roderick, I guarantee he wouldn't survive the whole day. At the bottom, Greg is imagining himself as Flat Stanley and his brother Roderick is running him through a paper shredder. A paper shredder is a machine that is used to destroy and cut up documents or important papers that people should not see. I really liked the book, but it kind of freaked me out too. One thing it did was give me a deathly fear of bulletin boards. Are you sure you don't want the bed? It's a lot more comfy. Uh, that's okay. You go ahead and take it. In second grade, everyone in my class had to color a cutout of Flat Stanley and mail him to a friend or relative who lived far away. Then that person was supposed to take a picture of Flat Stanley in front of something interesting and mail him back with the photo. My friend Rowley sent Flat Stanley to a bunch of his relatives and got lots of cool pictures back. Rowley even sent him to his uncle who lives in Asia. And he took a picture of Flat Stanley in front of the Great Wall of China. Well, the first person mom sent my Flat Stanley to was her cousin Stacy, who lives in Seattle. But she probably wasn't the best choice. Stacy is one of those people who hoard or keep all sorts of stuff like newspapers and magazines. So mom should have known that once her cousin got her hands on Flat Stanley, he wasn't coming back. Today, mom said she was going to take photos of our new Flat Stanley in front of all the cool places we visit and then make a scrapbook of our trip. As soon as we got on the highway, she started snapping pictures, but she was probably a little too eager because her first few pictures weren't exactly keepers. Now at the top, we see the ant and all of the stuff she's been hoarding or holding on to. So if someone hoards things, that means that they just keep getting more stuff and more stuff and they don't want to get rid of it. They want to keep it, even if they don't need it. At the bottom, we see the pictures of Flat Stanley that Mom has already been taking. So there's one with a no U-turn sign. That's a little curve with the line going through it. That means don't do a U-turn or turn around in the middle of that road. Then we have one that is with a tree. That's still a little boring. And then we have one with a really cute cow. So I agree with Mom on that one that that's a good picture. When Mom wasn't taking pictures, Flat Stanley was taped to the front air conditioning vent. All I can say is he was having a lot better ride than I was. 
The windows in the back of the van don't open, and the vents were blocked by all our luggage, so I wasn't getting any cold air. What made me even more uncomfortable was the fact that mom was in control of the trip. Mom always tries to make things about education, and I knew she was going to turn this experience into one long lesson. She's been doing that ever since I was little. I remember when I got scratched by Grandma's cat, and Mom tried to turn it into a teaching moment. C-A-T, cat. And he's crying. Sure enough, a half hour into the trip today, Mom started in with the educational stuff. She borrowed a bunch of CDs from the library that teach Spanish and said would use the long stretches on the road to learn a new language as a family. Hola, learn to speak Spanish fluently. Mom's always saying that learning a foreign language is the best thing you can do for your brain. Well, that might be true, but I think she should leave the actual teaching up to the schools. Learning a new language is really good for you. Mom decided it would be a good idea to expose me to foreign language early on. So when I was in first grade, she would put the Spanish speaking channels on TV while we ate breakfast. Mom would repeat whatever they said on the television, but when she said the words, they came out a little bit different. Tengo hambre. Tengo hamburgers. I ended up learning all sorts of phrases that weren't right. For example, the way you're supposed to say what's your name in Spanish is como te llamas. Well, I know that now because I learned it in my middle school Spanish class. But when I was little, mom taught me that what's your name in Spanish is te amo, which actually means I love you. I just wish I had known that before I it, said it to a million different people. They're eating their dinner at Juan's Mexican food, and we see the waiter has their food on a tray, and little Gregory is yelling, Te amo, te amo, to the waiter. So he's saying, I love you, I love you. That would be pretty confusing. Today, Mom played the first two Spanish CDs, but she got frustrated that no one seemed to be paying attention. So she switched gears and said we were going to play a card game. She read about in her magazine. The game was called Alphabet Groceries, and you play it like this. So the first player has to name an item you can get at the grocery store that starts with the letter A. The next person has to come up with an item that starts with B, and so on. If a player can't come up with an item that starts with their letter, they are out of the game. Mom said I should go first, so I said Apple, which I guess was kind of an obvious choice. Roderick was up next, but he said he couldn't come up with anything that started with a B. I'm pretty sure he was lying to get out of the game. But with Roderick, you never know. Hmm. When Roderick got knocked out, the turn went to Manny, who came up with his word right away. Bapple! Mom started clapping, but I pointed out that Bapple isn't a real word. She said Manny is just learning the alphabet and that we all need to encourage him. I quit in protest, and from then on, it was only Manny, Mom, and Dad playing. I really wished my earplugs weren't buried in my duffel bag under a pile of suitcases because the next hour and a half was pretty painful. Zapple! Yay! All that talk about food was actually getting me kind of hungry. And when I saw a sign for a drive through place at the next exit, I asked Mom if we could pull over. But Mom said we wouldn't be stopping at any of those kinds of restaurants because they don't serve real food. She said fast food places lure kids in with cheap plastic toys to trick them into eating sugar and fat. And we weren't going to fall into that trap. Mom said she had a much better alternative and handed me a lunch bag with my name on it. Gregory, mommy meal, nutritious food, fun activities, all mixed up, too punny. Why did the rabbit like Watership Down? It was a hair-raising tail. Ha ha ha.